that's the little doodacky. Alrighty, so I was examining the chain and the derailleur, and I'll uh, see if I can get it to show up right there. That bent link, as far as I can tell, is the only one, but it's causing me an absolute headache. Um, so we're just going to pop that link out and just replace it with a master. In my haste to get everything done yesterday, I managed to misplace the gasket for that, and the only spare that I have is for the older 36 uh, so what I'm going to end up having to do is just do a bead of silicon gasket sealer around there and hope that it's enough this is a good tip for getting your rag joints nice and centered I've got just about one cable tie for every bolt, and that's just coincidental, really. We just sort of shoved them all down there, hard up against the hub, and that will hold uh, the sprocket more or less center. Alrighty, so that insane sprocket is on. It doesn't look like we're going to have any clearance issues which is good. Now, there's quite a big wobble in that sprocket, but there's also one in the wheel. Um, but that's about as centered as I can get that wheel, considering it's not the wheel that came for that bike. Also, it's old and probably bent out of shape anyway. Um, but I'll try and compensate for that wobble by tightening the bolts and We'll see how we go. Alright, so that's about as good as I'm going to get it. There's a little bit of up-down movement, but I'll be honest, the um, hub adapter that I'm using on the Mark IV was worse than that. All in all, that's not terrible. That's probably got more to do with the wheel than anything else. That imbalance in that wheel. You can see how the bike wants to shake. But we'll manage. So that's brand new out of the box. I'm going to do the same to this as I did with the Mark IV one, and I'm going to just go ahead and trim these veins off because they're a restriction. Uh, I've done a couple of hundred Ks with the other one like that and haven't had a single issue. Um, also, these veins, I know on this frame that I'm building, uh, they jam up against the frame, so getting rid of them is just going to make fitment that much easier. All right, and that's the end result. It's a bit mucky in there, but there's nothing that's going to get into the, the filter or the carb, so that's all right. Um, we'll go ahead and throw that on and... Should be a nice easy fit. This is why it's a good idea to pull your, par your carby apart before putting it anywhere near the bike. Looking at our little carb here. There's our loose little friend. I'll try and get a good angle. So he just sort of sits in those prongs there. And there he goes again. Bugger. Um, that's the little doodacky that will let the fuel in or block it off depending on whether or not your little float bowl is lifted, which is obviously that part in there. So if your carb's leaking, leaking a whole heap of fuel, it means that there's nothing actually stopping the fuel from dripping down uh, through here. All right, I've lost a lot of daylight and I remember what a pain in the backside it was to fit this engine to the frame um, basically the throttle cable will have to come up alongside the bar uh, here but more on that later I don't want to sound too optimistic but it's looking like I haven't had to remove a single link 
uh, from the stock chain. We'll have to see how the alignment goes, but fingers crossed, it'll be that easy. Alrighty. Now, after running out of daylight uh, yesterday, I got a good tension on there. Um, however, there's no room in that tensioner for when the chain inevitably stretches. Um, so I'm going to have to go ahead and remove, I'm thinking at least two links, um, because I need to be able to move this further back towards the rim, um, because the chain keeps on binding up. Yeah, I remember why I retired this frame, <clears throat> because it is a pain in the backside. Uh, the motor barely fits, it's because this bar comes down on an angle, Instead of being straight, it should be coming in about there. If we look on the other side, we can see I have to cock the carby at a slight angle. All my hard work with the carby cover, I had to get rid of. I've used two of these internal bits to wedge the foam in there. Literally the only way it fits. And now, the clutch arm is impacting the frame. So you can see I've casually marked out some there. So I'm going to get the grinder out and I'm just going to grind into the frame and hope that I can clear it. This is my desperate attempt to protect the carby from the filings I'm about to create. And if it hasn't been obvious by now, I really don't care too much for this frame. Um, I'm about to cut into the tube there, and I really don't care. This little magpie came attracted to the sound of the Dremel. Chop you! Cute little evil creature. All right, so if it wasn't obvious already, I really don't give a toss about this frame. Um, but we actually do have clear access for the clutch. Uh, there is something weird about this clutch. I don't have a good feeling about it. Just sprayed that black. Um, Obviously, I don't give a rat's if this bike starts to crack. <sighs> it was supposed to be the smaller 50cc going on here anyway, so... This is an experiment to see how that 56 performs. We'll just ride it till it breaks, I guess. Alrighty, after much tinkering and messing around with, honestly, more slack in that chain than what I'd prefer, We seem to have sorted out the alignment issue. So I've gone ahead and removed the end of the throttle, ready for the bar end mirror, which I'll take off the Mark IV bike when I want to ride this one. Here's a tip I just figured out. When, like me, you've got limited space here, it's a lot easier just to cock the carby on the side and uh, feed it in that way. Now this is the issue, and you start to see it here, is this cable gets a bit of a bend in it. Um, now I'll probably be able to thread it up under the tank there, but it's always annoyed me that I can't have the carby dead straight because of that cable. Now, the first time I put an engine on this frame with the Mark 1, I actually had the cable sticking up on the other side, and that created a second problem, was that I didn't have enough room to raise the choke because uh, it would impact on the bar. So the carb is not on a massive angle, and I do know that the bike will run 
if it's not perfect. Um, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Right, so that's the bottom half of our kill switch slash throttle assembly. Now, not once have I ever drilled the handles for that stud. I've always just removed it. Um, I, I found that even with these crappy screws that it comes with, you can tighten it down hard enough so that it doesn't move. And after the distances I've done, I, I'd say that theory's proved correct. And I'd rather not muck it up and be forced to keep that in a position I don't quite like. I, I like being able to rotate the throttle assembly to where it's sort of comfortable to hit with my thumb while I'm on the throttle. Um, I just don't have the confidence in my ability to eyeball exactly where that stud has got to go. It's a lot easier just to turn it and then tighten it down with screws. And of course that's just a two and a half mil Allen bolt in there to remove that. All right, we are looking pretty good right now with the exception of that very, very, very poorly painted exhaust. That's just silicon spray. Just using the last in a can I had lying around. That's going to burn off and stink and probably smoke to the high heavens, but that is the exhaust that came with the kit. Um, however, that's actually got the black tip from the Mark IV, the tip that I modified from this kit. Now, I didn't film this. I'll do a video on that later, maybe. Um, I put that tip there with the chopped off tube on that bike and went for a ride you know it actually wasn't that bad um it made it sound like a much bigger bike without being too loud it had you know, a much bassier note in it uh, but probably more on that later this is interesting i am not sure how i'm connecting the fuel lines I'll put it up there, in which case it's going to melt against the engine. Or I'll put it back there, and there's literally no room for the, the hose to go. I'll figure something out. This was my solution. Um, I grabbed a spare uh, clutch cable spring, wrapped it around the fuel line to try and protect it from the heat of the engine and all I really need to do is replace this length here and just shorten it just to bring the whole shebang -a bang in because at the moment all this fuel is having to go uphill and it's a gravity fed system so hopefully I shouldn't have to explain why that is bad right that's our more or less finished product I'm not too happy about it and there is a slight uphill but the weight of the fuel up top uh, we'll compensate for that. Uh, I've had similar sort of uphills in the first build. Um, I just hope that this spring does what I'm intending it to do. So it is starting to rain today, but I think I'm ready to fire. I'm going to go steal some fuel out of the Mark IV tank. Pop it in and see how we go. It's just started raining. I'm still waiting for my fuel to fill up. It's annoying because I just want to get this bike started and now I'm not going to be able to without getting saturated. There is something definitely wrong with that clutch. All that smoke is the um, paint coming off the exhaust. So there's definitely something going on with that clutch. Look at all that silicon paint burning off. Bloody hell. Um, so I have definitely got an air leak and that will be the silicon gasket didn't bead as well I was hoping. Um, I've cut gaskets for the intake out of cardboard before and it has worked for me. Um, so I'll probably just go ahead and do that. But... All in all, the first ride was an abysmal failure because of that exhaust leak. I'm having issues with 
the chain tensioner. I feel like that sprocket doesn't fit the chain. I know that's a very odd thing to say, but it, it, it's like clipping. It hasn't come off at all. Um, now the sprocket that size, I was expecting mountains of torque, but I, I really didn't get that impression. All I got was a reduced top speed. Um, again, that's probably because the bike is running poorly. Uh, once it cools down and hopefully after it stops raining, I'm hiding under the house at the moment. Um, yeah, after, after it cools down, I'll pop that intake off. And yeah, we'll um, cut another gasket, get rid of that silicon goo that's on it, because that really has never worked for me. Uh, I don't know what it's supposed to seal, but it's never worked, never worked properly anyway. Um, so yeah, I'll sort out that air leak and um, go from there, I guess. All right. That's looking pretty good to me. I actually ran a flame around the edges to clean up the flak. Obviously just a little bit, but... Time will tell. That's so dodgy. Now, there have been some days where I've been willing to ride in the rain, but considering the bike's not yet running properly, today's not one of those days. It's just a little bit too miserable for me. Oh well.